this is part two of the explanation of how you would go about setting up a 4-bit binary counter connected to a 7th segment display to actually count numbers. The first section I showed you how to build the display itself. I also showed you how to set up the decimal decoder which has the which has programmed in how to display each individual number. This section I'll be showing you the logic gates that actually translate the four digit binary input that will come from the counter itself once the counter is built. As you can see right now nothing has any input so we have uh, a zero on the display. A zero in binary meaning that all four bits would be off and since nothing has a signal makes it so that it's the only one that's active and once it gets to be light which is coming soon I will show you some of the logic gates and uh, then we'll get into the next step alright and now that we have some light let's take a look at these logic gates of course our ten gates one set up for each digit and essentially created connectors here with four pins one on the far left, facing this way of course, is the pin for the 8 digit, 4, 2, and 1 in binary. What we're looking at right now is the gate that activates the number 1 on the display. 1 in binary of course being 0, 0, 0, 1. This gate will only be active if there is an input on the first bit and, this being an AND gate, just with an inverter thrown in here, these three bits have to be off. If any of these three bits are on, obviously you don't have one, it'll disable the gate, and you'll have a different number displayed. Two is up top, I'll run up there in a second just to show you those, but uh, three is right here, very similar. Three in binary, zero, zero, one one and we have the same thing this time the gate ends up being a three input and gate with an inverter for the two bits that need to be off so both of these would need to be on those two bits would need to be off and that would activate the three over here on the display won't run through and show you all of these because uh, well, there are ten of them and they're all pretty much the same. Had to kind of space things out a little bit here. You've got a few down below, a few raised up up here, and then I actually had to build one on another level because I ran out of space. Having to have four inputs for each gate with gaps in between the redstone wires to keep things from shorting out made this take up an awful lot of space. But from up here we also have a really nice view of the overall device itself. Again, the uh, decimal decoder down there, and the back side of the display. What we have to do next, again I basically made it so that there are four pins connecting each of these gates. can't see the third one here because there's a ladder in the way. But what our next step is going to be is to basically wire all of the pins together. Pin 4 on all 10 of these logic gates needs to be connected so that when bit 4 from the counter or the series of switches that I'll build for the purpose of this video, so that when pin 4 is active pin 4 on all of the logic gates is active likewise with 3, 2, and 1 so this is going to be a nice uh, complicated twisty bit of wiring over here made more difficult by the fact that I was stupid and built this thing very high off the ground so back in a little while luckily you don't have to watch the tedious process of wiring all this together but uh, once that's complete 
we'll have four switches over here that we can set binary numbers on which we'll update on the display and that will be most of the difficult part of this entire project compared to wiring all of this setting up the counter and the timer will actually be relatively easy okay and that is finally done you are looking down right now at the top of the twisty mess of uh, wires and bridges that I had to run to get all of the logic gates to connected to each other took much longer than I expected and again I'm extremely high in the air so made it even more fun getting it all done but that being completed now we uh, have this thing mostly functional we can have a little bit of fun with it here right now entirely sure why those switches are on but uh, we have a six on the display it's because we have bit two and bit three active bit two being two bit three being four two plus four is six in binary giving us the six on the display go ahead and oh my frame rate is horrible right now apologize for that as you can see the 6 over here is on I had to revamp some of these logic gates some of them got a little bit more complicated because they had to be made smaller because of the distance I had to run things on several of the inputs needed to be inverted here there's a huge mess of inverters hiding back behind things but, uh, again we have bit 1 off bit 2 on on, bit 4 off. Thanks to our friendly logic gate here, and that translates into a 6. Turning on that part of the display. And we can, of course, change these. Instead of 6, let's go ahead and go with 5. 4 plus 1. As you can see, it's updated to a 5. Again, that's actually the more complicated part of things, um, at least as far as construction goes. The next video, I will be making the counter, which uh, actually is should be able to fit right in here. Hopefully it fits without too much difficulty, and I don't have to extend this even more. But I'll be showing you, uh, I'll actually do one of the four latches separate. Um, it being 4-bit, there's going to be 4 latches, essentially 4 interconnected memory circuits so that uh, you know, they count in sequence. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail in the next video. Um, and once I have that going, I'll make it so that I can count numbers by flipping a switch to go each increment. And then finally we'll get to the end of the project where I will have a timer connected to it just kind of chill up there, watch this count through the entire sequence. But that is it for now. Um, probably won't be nearly as long of a gap in between these next two, this video and the next as there was between this and the last. It should be coming soon.